What's up? Welcome back to another design class. And as we mentioned before, this video we're actually going to get right into level shifting and stuff. Unrelated to these two, these are just. But um, in the previous video we actually talked about like the background knowledge and the other vocab and things you need to know in order to do level shifters. And so if you haven't seen that, you probably should. Otherwise, the stuff we do today might not make a lot of sense. So go check that out. The link will be in the description if you can't find it. Um, but yeah. So actually, in the last video, the level shifter that I kind of hinted at, we're not going to be doing those yet. We're going to be doing a completely different type, which um, I think is a little bit more straightforward to understand. So we're going to do that today. So um, to understand the, level the concept of level shifters, we're actually going to do a physical model instead of drawing a crease pattern. So go ahead and get a piece of kami or some other test paper, and then um, make a water bomb base. And we're going to sink this water bomb base. So you can go ahead and follow along, and we're going to sync it into thirds. So to sync it into thirds, we're just going to eyeball it. That's pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's definitely good enough. So yeah, go ahead and sync it into thirds. So this is basically a box fitted base. It just happens to have four flaps and all the flaps are three units long. Here's our base and I'm going to call this the axis. Like as we said a rule of thumbs is the axis is the line on which the edge and the valleys line up. So that would be like right here. And then these guys are axial plus one. These creases here are axial plus one. And of course these diagonals are ridges and then these vertical ones are hinges. We got that. So we learned that last time. I assume you know that. So what this kind of level shifter does is it can take any any axial or axial plus one crease, so any of these horizontal ones, and it can shift um, it to anywhere between the range of axial to axial plus two. There are, it, it is possible for it to go higher, but that's very impractical and not something we're going to do in this course. To get you an idea of why we need this, let me show you what would happen if we did not have this level shifter. So let's say I wanted, I want this flap, just this flap, to be axial Right now it's axial plus one, it's one unit tall. Let's say I want to thin it out. I want it to be just axial plus one and a half. So let me pre-crease that. Let me just pre-crease, um, kind of just get some pre-creases in, basically. This folded in half, basically, just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Okay, so, Here's my flap that I that I want to thin out. So I'm just going. If I did not have level shifters, I'm just going to go ahead and try to sink it and see what happens. So I don't. I want to keep the other flaps the same width as best as I can. But you see, it's it's. Uh, I'm finding it kind of hard. So here, if I if I I did a, I did a successful sink here. This flap is now half the width it used to be. But what happened here? It like runs into it's a train wreck because this crease is now an axial crease, but this crease is an axial plus one. And so when they meet up there, like what happens? It just doesn't lie flat, right? So what ends up happening is we might have to sink it, keep going the sink. So to make this, um, you know, we might have to just keep sinking it. Like that, but now we got our this other these other flaps are now all coming into axial plus half. We only want this flap to be thin. We want the other flaps to stay up. So here's what we do. So when I mentioned the train wreck earlier, I'm gonna show you what the, what it looks like. The transition. Remember what a level shift does? It transitions two creases of different altitudes. So in this case, we need a transition from this axial crease to this axial plus one crease, and that's what a level shift does. And it does it when they cross over a ridge. And here's what the transition looks like. So a nice sequence to do it would look something like this. So we're going to take this, we'll squash it, you see that? And then we can sink it in. And so what this does is it transition. it's it, um, neatly transitioned this axial crease, and then when it goes around the bend, now it's an axial plus one crease. And I did that pretty neatly. 
So if we continue the sync, so it goes around axial. Remember, this is the flap that we want to thin out. So we continue the axial crease. And over here, we have to do this, put in the same transition. So let me just uh, squash this real quick. There we go. And for now, we're going to be using a 22 and a half squash. Like, you know, the 20 angle is 22 and a half. But we're, I'm going to show you something pretty cool later when we, um, when we get there. And now you see that we've successfully transitioned it. Now this flap is the only one that's an axial plus half, and these other flaps remain their original widths. So basically this, what this thing does is it transitions from axial to axial plus one. Now what if we want to transition to an axial plus two? Now to show you that, I'm, we're actually going to, I'm going to sync the whole thing real quick. So let's go ahead and make, basically take our water bomb base, and we're going to sync it in and out six times. Okay, so now by the previous basis standards, we would call this axial plus one and a half, which of course you can define your axial as however you want, as long as you keep it consistent. But for our purposes right now, we're going to now call this as axial plus one. Now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how do we transition this, this axial crease? How do we transition this to an axial plus two? So it's a similar concept. Instead of squashing down, like last time, what we would have done is we would have squashed down like that. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and squash it up like that. And it's basically the same thing, but um, it's the same thing, but just thinking of it in a different direction, from a different angle, basically. And so we can sync it through. And again, it's the same. It's the same transition. It still transitions from axial to axial plus two or so it's still it's still the same thing but this time it's uh in this context it's a transition that will level shift it to make things thicker rather than thinner and it's the same thing just in a different context basically and so what this basically does is it can lift up it can lift up any axial crease it has to take the whole thing though you have to take like this entire crease and you can elevate it up so it used to be axial now it's axial plus two and as a result your flaps are thicker Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of this, this type of level shifter. So one of the pros is that you can just use the base as it is. You have any base, as you just um, set, up, set up a transition at the ridges. It already has all these ridge creases. You just you need to squash them. So we'll see with the other types of uh, the level shifters, you actually need to get a specific setup in order to get it to work. But here you just take a base and you, have a, you find a ridge, you squash it, and then sink things through. Definitely, that's what I meant by it's a lot easier. Another thing is that you have a, actually you have a lot of freedom. So let's say I wanted to make instead of axial plus two, I want an axial plus one and a half. So that's super easy. All I have to do is just sink it like this, and then I can just just like straight up sink it. And it gives me a lot of freedom. Like, do I want to make an axial plus one third, axial plus one sixth, axial plus one and a half, whatever you want. You just sink it a certain height. So here, here's my axial plus one and a half. So I have a lot of freedom to get the, exactly the right thickness I need. Um, now with that being said, even though we have a lot of precision, we can't shift higher than axial plus two. There are ways to make it shift like really high, infinitely high, but uh, it requires a super long flap. Like so you see how the shifter takes up like a good part of a flap. So when we shift higher, it will take even longer to reach that elevation. So you requires a really long flap. So that's not great. And even if you can shift to higher, it's like a super complicated structure that I'm not going to talk about in this video. So, and it's not really practical. Uh, you can, however, you actually can shift to negative axial, which I, I never talked about before. But axial minus one, that is a thing. So let me uh, give you an example. So let me take, uh, I'm going to open the, up this thing. And then I'll take this thing, this second, the second pleat, and we'll squash that. We'll squash that. We'll squash on both sides. And then you can sink it through. And this is axial minus one. So here's the, this is this edge. This is remember, this is the axis, right? 
and this one is actually below and then of course you can also you know what I meant by the precision thing you can also sync it even further to get super precise so you can make like oh I want to sync it axial minus one half well of course you can go ahead and just do it and sync it so now we've got axial minus one half these creases are axial minus one half so you get a lot of options you get a lot of freedoms and also this would be a color change too I don't I can't show you but it would be a color changing now here's one more downside which I'm actually going to show you how to fix is that it actually creates 22 and a half angles and for a number of reasons we don't like 22 we don't like mixing 22 and a half with box speed all right here we are in Orihime um, and I want to kind of show you like um, the crease patterns behind the level shifters that we just did so on the left here we got just a, a regular like four unit flap um, let's fold it and see what it looks like Remember, select and press F yeah so as you can tell it's um you know it's got like it's pretty wide now let's fold this one which has our um, level shifter on it so uh, it's gray let's turn on shadows Ooh, I don't know about that one but uh, basically you can tell um, it's yes yeah, so this is basically what we saw in uh, real life now here's the thing so these are 20 this is a 22 and a half angle so if I like measure this angle here so yeah or negative 22 and a half same thing and the thing about 22 and a half you can tell it's a rational angle but the slope is irrational and what that means is that even if we make the grid size super high like no matter how high a grid size is it will never fully lie on a grid see how it's like it's just a little bit off so we don't really like combining box pleating with 22 and a half it just makes things generally a whole mess so here is what we do instead um, so let me just draw a copy of this let me make a copy and let me draw what we will do instead so instead of this 22 and a half thing we're going to do with um, something that uses slope instead it will look something like this okay now it looks like it's kind of crooked but uh, when you look at it again you will see that everything is on a grid point and now of course the angles are going to be irrational right like it's going to be an arc tangent of two which we might do an arc a video about arc tan what that means later but um, you see it's like some weird angle but it still works you can tell like if we turn on this thing somehow it magically is flat foldable now let's uh, let's fold it and see what happens so yeah see how it folds flat uh, and it's still a level shifter basically so this is a much easier way to do um, level shifters it's easier to draw it's easier to fold uh, and yeah so generally instead of squashing it at an angle of 22 and a half you're gonna draw something like this now this triangle this little this triangle I don't know if it has a good name but it's, it shows up all over the place and to give you like a little bit of a like maybe we'll make a future video all about this video about this type of triangle but um, I'll give you two teasers right now so first of all let's um, draw a Pythagorean tr Pythagorean triangle so three four five triangle and we rabbit ear it so meaning take all the angle bisectors now look at that see how it all lands on grid points and these two okay all right you see that now if we draw another triangle here and we do more rabbit ears we see like the basic idea behind a Pythagorean stretch and inside this Pythagorean stretch you notice that we got the same triangle here then we got over here on the level shifter so that's one place that it shows up another place that this triangle shows up is in tilted grid design so this is my uh, tilted grid designing document uh, it's a bit of a mess but basically look here's 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 one of my tilted grid crease patterns look at it what do you notice about the triangle and the slope that is at it is actually the same slopes as the triangle in our level shifter over here 
So, you know, it looks like just, you know, a simple level shifter is a little simple solution to get rid of an annoying 22 and a half. But actually, this triangle's got a lot more deeper meaning to it. And perhaps we'll get around to it one day. So, yeah, so if you don't want to use these 22 and a half angles, use these this type of triangle instead. Okay, now for this video's homework, um, it's just going to be as usual. Just, uh, I want you to use these level shifters in a design, obviously. So... You should have, if you have followed along in the past few videos, you should have some, at least one box pleated design that you know of, that you have. Like you made a stick figure, like you made a little, like um, my friend Shoko Pudding Man, he made a uh, skeleton hand. Someone else, um, my friend Chris, he made like a, uh, a bull or something like that. So up to now, we've just been doing stick figures for the homework. But now you have enough knowledge to either, you know, make a, a flap thinner or to make a flap thicker. So I have this example crease pattern, for example, and um, I'll show you, maybe I want to make, I don't know, maybe I want to make uh, this flap. I want to make this one. I want to make that one a little thicker. So here's what I'll do. So what I'll do is I will, again, in the real life, remember when we were like squashing it or something like that? This is what it will look like when you're drawing. So, um, so, Obviously, I have a lot of experience with this, so I can kind of do it in my head. But in real life, you're going to want to, you know, fold your base and then squash them, as I showed you earlier. Yeah, so basically, um, yeah, just use what you learned. Try to mess around with it. Don't take my word for it. I want you to try it for yourself and see if it actually works. And so... Um, oops. So let's let me. So here's my example of using a level shifter in a design. I just you know squashed two ridges and then lifted up that that lifted up this crease from axial to axial plus two. Let's fold it. See what it looks like. And yeah, so see see now it's like lifted up a bit. So you know, obviously this tree was not used for anything. It was not supposed to look like anything. So I'm not gonna be have anything to shape it into. So this is the crease pattern for, um, you know, the the well-known plant turtle. So uh, you now know what's going on in the corners here. So these are level shifters. Yeah, basically these are what this is what uh, keeps the, the turtle from being a stick figure. Like with the fins, if you ever folded it, you know that the fins are like two units wide, mostly. Or basically they're not stick figures. And the way that comes about is with these level shifters that um, shift it up, basically. So that's that's my example of how you could use it in the homework. Of course, you know this is a pretty polished design, but um, you know you get the idea. So do that, give that a try. Let me know if you have any questions, or you know join the Discord server, which will be linked in the description. If you have any questions, you can ask me there. Other people there will be there to help you. So um, yeah, we're here to help you learn origami, how to design. So anything you need, just let me know. Okay. So give it a try. Thank you for watching and. Um, yeah, leave a like or subscribe if you found this video helpful, if it explained it well. And uh, I'll see you next time.